everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I like to talk about books and today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up where I talk about all the books I read in the month of May. So as you can tell, I am in a new location. I have moved up to Philadelphia. It was a seven hour move away. It was a big move. It was an exhausting move. And so I haven't been posting as much content lately because I've just been very busy <laughs> getting all of this done. I was planning on doing one more weekly vlog, including the move, but then that just got stressful as heck. So I do have a little bit of moving footage that I'll just put in the next vlog whenever that happens. But I did want to get around to doing my May wrap up, even though it is like already almost the middle of June. I just wanted to make sure I filled you in on the books I read in May because I did read a lot and I read a lot of thrillers and I just thought it'd be good to stay consistent. I just have to have a wrap up because if I don't, I might lose my mind. Also, I'm obviously living in a much bigger city now. So if it's loud, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to figure this out. This is my first time filming in this location. It's also really dark because it has been storming so I did my best just bear with me through this wrap up and hopefully we'll figure this out together but with all that being said let's go ahead and get started and talk about all the books I read in the month of May so my first reading vlog of May was a reading vlog where I read new thriller books and I read a couple of books in that video I'm pretty sure I already talked about every value break and who is Maude Dixon in my previous wrap up so you can go check that out to see my thoughts on those books or just watch the reading vlog to see full in-depth thoughts but I did not tell you about Finlay Donovan is killing it yet because I didn't finish that one until May. I mean, I told you about it in the vlog, but I haven't told you about it in a wrap up yet. So let's talk about Finlay Donovan is killing it. Also, sorry if you hear the thunder. So I only heard super positive things about this book. I was expecting it to be a five star read and it turned out to be like a two and a half three star read for me. I didn't really enjoy it. It's about this woman, Finlay Donovan, who is an author and she's sitting in a Panera one day talking to her editor or her agent or something about the plot of her next crime thriller book. And so she's talking about like killing a character or something, but a fellow patron at the Panera overhears her conversation and assumes that she's talking about real life and that she's like a hitman. And so slips her a piece of paper and hires her to kill someone. And then she gets swept up in this crazy crime world. It really reminds me of that show Dead to Me on Netflix with Christina Applegate. It has very similar vibes to that where it's like comedic relief, suspense, thriller, fast paced, kind of like suburban-y vibes. I just couldn't really get into this. I feel like I would have liked this better if it was a TV show. It didn't really work in the book form for me and I did not like Finlay Donovan as a character. I just didn't care about her, couldn't connect to her. This one just wasn't really for me. I do think this is going to be a series. They've announced the second book coming out and I will not be reading it because I'm just not interested in it. Then the next reading vlog I did in the month of May was for the second worst book I've ever read in my life. And that was Flock by Kate Stewart. I read this because this was being recommended to me so often on my TikTok FYP. So I wanted to do a little experiment to see if TikTok knows my reading taste better than I do because typically my TikTok FYP is very targeted to things I like and the algorithm is really, really great. But it kept throwing this book at me and I did not think I'd like it because it's a small darker romance and I was right I did not like this book a uh, solid you know one star 0.5 stars no rating it just was not good so this is a trilogy this is the start of the trilogy called the Ravenhood trilogy and the synopsis on the back of the book doesn't really tell you much about what the book is about and that is I think intentional I don't know it's like basically just from the perspective of this girl talking about how she is traumatized from love in her past something like that. And for most of this book, you don't really know what it's going to be about. You follow this girl who's moving back in with her dad. She is like 19 ish years old. She starts working at his factory. She meets this guy and he's got this group of friends and they're all really rowdy and wild and dark and dangerous. And they've all got these raven tattoos and she doesn't know what it means. And then she ends up and I don't know if this is a spoiler, but I don't know. It's just the style of the relationship. She ends up in a polyamorous relationship with two of the guys in this group. And then things go awry basically and even by the end of the book I'm not really sure where this is going what this is supposed to be leading to people just love this book people I saw on TikTok were raving over it but I thought it was the second worst book I've ever read in my life it was not good it was terribly written I hated some of the ways that the women were portrayed in this book in particular especially the main character it was just bad just a bad time would not recommend I also have no air conditioning in this place so I'm hot uh so give me one moment 
Okay, next up, I finished the Akotar trilogy. I read A Court of Wings and Ruin, and honestly, I don't remember it much at this point. Feels like it was so long ago that I read this book. It is deceivingly long. This is like 700 pages with Bible thin pages. Even though it doesn't look big, it is bigger than A Court of Mist and Fury, which is the second book. I remember enjoying this. I gave it like a four star rating. I like the whole trilogy. I'm gonna keep reading in the series. Probably not this month, I'll probably wait until next month, but I don't really have anything remarkable to say about it. I thought it was a good enough conclusion. It was good. I liked it. That's all I have to say. And then I think for all the rest of the books that I read in May, they are captured in my two weekly reading vlogs that I did. So I'll just go in order of the reading vlogs. So the first one that I did, that was when I read a couple new releases and I ended up going to the beach that week. And so the first book that I read that week I believe was House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This is a young adult mystery slash horror type book and I saw really great things about this all like five star reviews. I honestly don't remember even telling you about it in that weekly reading vlog and what my end rating ended up being but the more time that passes since I read this the more I enjoy this book. When I immediately read it I was a little disappointed. I thought it was like a three star. It was kind of boring. Not a lot happened but thinking about it and the way it was written I did really like this book. I really appreciate this book. So this is a young adult story about this group of three sisters who when they were younger they all went missing one day. They were like in the middle of the street with their parents on like New Year's Eve or something and their parents looked away for one second and then they disappeared into thin earth. They were gone for a month and then they returned a month later and their appearance completely changed. They had like an insatiable appetite and they had a crescent moon scar on their throats and then like people were enamored by them. They can like glamour people kind of and they're just these spectacles. The main character that you follow is the youngest sister and she has no memory of what happened in that time when they went missing and so it follows them many years later when they are all grown up and the oldest sister ends up going missing and it starts this whole slew of mess again and there's this guy with this like creepy bull head chasing them around and it's really grotesque and creepy and the whole book is like trying to find the oldest sister what happened to the oldest sister but also connecting that with what happened in their past when they went missing that first time as children so like I said when I was first reading this book I was a little disappointed. I was like, mm, not a lot's happening. It's basically just a mystery. It's basically just a story about some sisters and like how far you'll go for family kind of thing. But the more time that passes, the more I just like think about this book and the aesthetic of it, the overall vibes, the imagery of it, the tone, like it just has really great atmosphere. It definitely matches this cover. So if you're interested in this kind of like creepy aesthetic, then I think you'll like the book and appreciate those same things. I actually could see myself rereading this one. It kind of falls in the same camp for me as like Horrid by Katrina Leno. Those like young adult mysteries with some weird horror elements that just have that right amount of weirdness that gets me intrigued with them. But I will say I really loved the ending of this one. It went really weird and I really liked it. I kind of suspected the way it was going. So it wasn't super surprising, but it was very, rewarding and I did really enjoy that. So I would recommend this one. I would just say it wasn't like an overwhelming five star for me. Then while I was driving to the beach I listened to an audiobook and that was The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I got this copy through Libra FM's ALC program so thank you so much Libra FM for providing me this audiobook and I really had a good time listening to this. I would give it like a four star rating which is super ironic because the whole book is an essay collection about the just like ridiculous way that we rate things on a five star scale in general but like it was like a four star book to me I can't resist giving it a rating so this is John Green's latest collection apparently he also has a podcast with this same name but I did not know that and I have not checked that out to see if that is true but I am interested in that now after listening to the book John Green also narrates the audiobook which was great it's great when you know the person and their personality and they're reading their book or essay collection or memoir or whatever to you. So I really liked that I listened to the audiobook. I would highly recommend the audiobook version of this if you'd like. I also do have links below to Libro FM in my description. I think you get a free audiobook or free 30 days. I'm not sure. I'll put something here that tells you what you get with the link down below. But if you want to give it a try, go through Libro FM. They support local bookstores. It's a better option than Audible. But anyways, this is an essay Essay collection where John Green is just talking about the human experience and just things we all experience and some essays are more personal to him and some are a little bit more broad and kind of collective of the entire human experience so there's essays on like the Indy 500 and it gets really personal to how that's a really important moment with his friends and then there's an essay on like whispering and he connects it to like his children whispering secrets to him and it just has all that classic John Green charm and those intimate moments and that witty sense of humor 
and writing and tone and it's just really really great it was a really great listen i will say it wasn't like life changing <laughs> i didn't take away anything super profound or anything that changes the way i think about things i just thought it was an enjoyable listen so if you're looking to have an audiobook to listen to i would recommend this one and then the last book i read in that video was the plot by jean hump corlitz this is a new thriller book that came out it's from the same author of the book called you should have known which was adapted into that show the undoing on hbo which i saw that show did not read that book anyway this is a thriller that i heard a lot of hype about as well heard it was really surprising really twisty really intriguing so i was intrigued so this is a story about a man who has written this book that was pretty successful and then he can't really seem to get that kind of success again he's kind of not really got a great idea he's not getting a book to sell he just kind of lost that moment in the spotlight and so then he goes on to be a teacher and he's teaching this mfa program and he ends up having this student one summer who has this idea that he says is brilliant he says his plot is like the best plot ever it's so innovative it doesn't follow any structure that anyone's ever seen before and it's going to be a bestseller it's going to be oprah's book club pick it's going to be a movie directed by steven spielberg he's just got the best idea and he doesn't want to tell anyone about it but he ends up telling the teacher about it and the teacher just kind of takes that and is like yeah that is a great idea I, he's a jerk but he'll be successful with it and moves on with his life and then a couple years later he thinks to check in on that guy and he finds out that guy is dead and so he decides to steal that story idea and write it for himself and then he becomes very popular it goes very well all those things happen it is a bestseller and then someone starts blackmailing him saying they know he is a thief and that that was not his story so the mystery here is who is blackmailing him who knows that's not his story if that guy didn't tell anyone about it is that guy not really dead or did he actually tell someone about it and then there's also the mystery of what the plot actually is of the book because you do get portions of the novel that he wrote throughout the book as well and you're just really interested in like what must this great plot be if it was such a bestseller and, and like worth stealing a dead person's story to do it again i don't remember what i rated any of these books when i was originally talking about them so my ratings may have changed a little bit since they were originally stated in the reading vlogs where i talked about these but i would say this is like a three-star thriller for me i thought it was okay i thought it was pretty slow paced i don't remember if i thought it was surprising or not but thinking back on it now like it wasn't that rewarding or that satisfying of an ending I did really like the writing style of this though I thought it was very well written I really liked the tone of it so I would keep reading from this author again I think this might have just been a bit overhyped in my mind because I was expecting it to be like the next gone girl level of oh my gosh I never saw that coming kind of twist and it was more of just like a okay yeah oh I remember now I also figured out the twist like who the person was that was blackmailing him I figured that out like halfway through the book and he doesn't figure that out to like the last 10 pages of the book so then I was pretty bored because I was like dude come on we all know who it is how do you not know but I would still probably recommend that I mean it was fun it was fine enough three stars not a bad rating it was a good thriller read it on the beach had a good time and like I said I would read more from this author in the future and then the last reading vlog that I did in the month of May was a reading vlog where you got to choose what I read that week so I posted a couple polls on my Instagram and my YouTube community tab to see out of eight books that I had on my radar which were the top ones that you guys wanted me to read and these were the three that ended up winning and that I ended up reading in that reading vlog there's also one more book the Thursday murder club that I think actually ended up in like second place but I just took the top and read three that I could fit in that week. So I am going to be reading The Thursday Murder Club probably in July because June is Pride Month and so I'm trying to read exclusively LGBTQIA plus books in the month of June. But I will be reading that book eventually. In a couple wrap-ups you'll see my thoughts on it. But these were the three books I read so let's talk about these. So the first one was The Upstairs House by Julia Fine. This had an overwhelming response on my Instagram like everybody wanted me to read this book. It was the large majority winner in the poll that it was posted on and so that really surprised me because I haven't heard anyone talk about this book and I didn't really have any expectations for it. I really wasn't even sure what this was supposed to be if it was a horror, literary fiction, mystery, suspense, just a sad book I don't know I didn't know what to expect but what it's about is this woman who has a baby and then she ends up having to take care of the baby like by herself because her husband travels for work a lot and then she definitely has postpartum depression I'm pretty sure they just lay that out in the synopsis for you as well and then she thinks that Margaret Wise Brown the author of Goodnight Moon is living upstairs like in her building but like behind a random door that doesn't really exist and she basically just hallucinates a children's author is living in her house 
and that she's having conversations with her and she like has her babysitter kid. I mean, it is intense. There's also an author's note in the end where the author explains her intentions to normalize the not all like rainbows and butterflies aspect of having a baby and how it feels to lose your identity once you become a mother and just the struggle of all that in general. So I definitely appreciated this book. I thought it was well written. I think it was well done. I think there's a lot of analysis you could do and the metaphors and just diving all into it. She was also the main character was also writing a thesis on Margaret Wise Brown, which is how that ends up playing into the hallucination and the story. So definitely lots of layers here, lots of things to examine, but it was not the most fun read. <laughs> I gave it like a four star rating because I appreciated it, but it was a little bit of a downer. So if you are not in a great space mentally, maybe just give it some time before you pick this up. Speaking of a downer, the next one I read was The Push by Ashley Audrain. And this is also a similar type of story about a mother. So this is a story about a woman who has this baby and then she cannot connect to this daughter that she has. She doesn't think her daughter likes her and she doesn't really like her daughter. She's convinced her daughter has evil inside of her. They just don't have a great connection. And you also get glimpses into how her mother was raised and how her mother was raised, so the grandmother. So it's like a multi-generational, how women and their family and daughters have just had all these problems and how that's kind of gone through the family. And so she has a lot of trouble with her first child and it causes a lot of tension in her marriage. And then she ends up having a second child, a little boy, and she loves the little boy. She thinks the little boy is perfect. She has a totally different experience with that boy. And then that causes additional tension on her marriage because her husband can obviously tell that she is not connecting to the daughter and doesn't like that she's convinced that the daughter is evil. And then as the synopsis lays it out, because I don't want to spoil anything, something happens where life as they know it is changed change in an instant and the devastating fallout forces the main character to face the truth. So it's really hard to talk about this book without spoiling it and telling you what happened. And I do go into spoilers in that reading blog that this book is in. So if you want to hear my spoilery thoughts, you can go check that out. I don't want to get into spoilers in this wrap up. I thought this was just a really interesting read and I just don't really know how I feel about it. Again, it was like a four star book. It was not fun, but I read it all within like 24 hours because I couldn't put it down. So it's like compulsive it's addicting to read you don't want to stop you just want to figure out what happens what that moment is what that fallout is is that daughter evil or is she not you don't know and it ends up with a pretty ambiguous ending so if you don't like ambiguous endings you're probably not gonna be satisfied with this and honestly I don't know if I was satisfied with this I just have so many mixed thoughts on this book even after a couple weeks post reading it I still don't really know what I think about it I guess I would recommend it but like I'd be careful who I recommend it to because there are some dark themes of just motherhood and postpartum vibes again and just like I don't know there's just a lot going on here so not the most fun summer read but definitely interesting there's lots of conversation about this right now so I'm interested to keep hearing other people's opinions on it so if you've read this let me know down below what you thought of it did you like it what do you think about the ending if you're gonna go into spoilers maybe put a spoiler tag so people know so that we can talk about it without anyone else getting spoiled but yeah this one was just a wild ride. And then the last book that I read in May was The Hunting Wives by May Cobb. This one was also in that video. So this is set in a suburban town in Texas. There's this group of women who are like in their little clique. And there's the main woman who is like very attractive, Margot Banks. She's very attractive, very successful, and alluring so slight. And she has this group of women around her that they call the hunting wives, but it's like secret. And they all get together and they like shoot guns, like they shoot skeet on Fridays together. And they just seem like the cool girls, like you just want to be their friend. So then you have your main character, Sophie, who just recently moved back to the town with her husband and her son. And she ends up getting swept into the hunting wives. And she ends up getting obsessed with Margot Banks. Then a dead body shows up and that causes lots of complications for these women. This was definitely a fun, fast paced read. It's definitely a book I could see being a TV show with that kind of suburban thriller vibe that's really popular right now. I had a fun time with it. It was like a good beach read, but it was also very raunchy. I was not expecting it to be that raunchy. And so just a fair warning for that, if that's not your thing, there is quite a lot of steam in this thriller. <laughs> I think overall I gave this like a three or a four star read I would probably say like now it's like a 3.5 to me. I would recommend it. I guess it's a fun time. I'm pretty sure I've already forgotten the twist of how it ends. So I guess it's surprising. I don't think I would reread this again, but I would say 
you know, if you're just looking for a fun thriller that's like that suburban housewife drama kind of fun thriller, then this is a good enough one to pick up. So that is it for all of the books that I read in the month of May. It was a pretty good reading month. I got to get through a lot of thrillers and I've been missing thrillers lately, so I'm glad that I got to catch up on some of them. I suspect that June will not be nearly as good of a reading month because I haven't even finished a book yet and it's June 8th, I believe. So going to be a smaller wrap up next time around, but I will do my best. Like I said, life has just been crazy. So thank you for bearing with my crazy schedule and my erratic posting and potentially bad lighting and potentially a noisy city behind you. I don't know yet. I'll find out what I'm editing. But like I said, we'll make it work. We'll figure out the summer. If you have read any of these books, definitely comment down below and let me know what you thought of them. Any favorites, any books you also hated. We're talking about flock here and I will be down in the comments below hanging out with you. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!